M is for Mason. G is for Graham. B for Betcha. This is the MGB Wrestling Podcast, the podcast with PG rated material accessible to wrestling fans of all ages. We could have a famous lost episode here right now. I have no idea how much memory Mason's got on his iPod, but we'll we'll see how it goes. All right. If it's like anything like my daughter's tablet, there's none. Uh oh. All right. You yeah, ready, my, my tablet doesn't have much memory on it either. Oh, good grief. All right. <laughs> my tablet's different than my iPhone. All right, we better stop gossiping and we better get on with this then, I guess. All right, you ready, Scott? Yes, sir. My name is Graham Bagshaw, and my co-host and creator of this podcast is proof that wrestling fans live with their parents, my 10-year-old son, Mason. And we've got a very special guest with us today as well, so we want to make sure that we get everything in, so we're going to start pretty quick today. Um, we've already had JRT from the Blade Job Show, I think it was like episode 13, uh, episode 31, the other way around on the digits, and um, we've got Scott Perkins, high voltage Scott Perkins from the Blade Job as well. How are you doing this evening, Scott? I'm doing wonderful, Graham. How are you? Oh, I'm doing just fine. I've had a two-day work day, so I'm a little bit more relaxed than I normally am. I'm not quite so stressed. How about you, Mason? I'm doing good. Yeah, Wednesday, and we've had one day of school so far, so that, that's that's pretty good. Oh, come on. That's not too bad. Somebody tells me we've got snow coming next week as well. We might get a snow day, Mason. Uh, you've probably already had a snow day up in up in your area, right? No, we don't have snow days. No snow day? Uh, I guess you're used to having snow. I guess that's the difference. Yeah, so yeah. You, you guys can cope much better. All right, let's get straight into then. This is a this was a special one as well, Mason, because we actually got um, this was all filmed in England, so it was all filmed in Manchester. So, do you want to lead us off, Mason, with your top three moments from uh, Raw? Give us your third moment. My third moment is I don't know who I like better, the New Day or Baron Corbin. I'm getting tired of both of them. You don't know who you like the least. Who you mean? I like better? Oh, okay. I hate both of them. Um, They're you... getting both. Really annoying. Uh, I would agree. I don't particularly like either of them either. Um, I thought the New Day was SmackDown. Um, yes, but still. You'd be picking back because Baron Corbin's on Raw? Yeah. Okay. They're... What do you think of those guys? Any opinions, Scott? Uh, I cannot stand Baron Corbin. I feel like there's no use for him, but I love the New Day. All right. Fair enough. I'm quite happy to move on from that topic. I have nothing good to say about those guys. I'm sick of them. All right. Next. Ember, she tried to do a crossbody on Nia Jax, but... Nia Jax, she just had her hands there and swatted her down. Yeah, yeah. Um, to me, that wasn't... Mo that When you start, started talking about Ember Moon, I was like, all right, I know where he's going with this. And then you avoided the big thing. Um, Nia Jax absolutely crushed her. Um, Tamina came in as well, and they were double-teaming her as well. Um, not that Nia Jax isn't... Why does Nia Jax even need any help? I don't even understand that. She could beat anybody all by herself. Uh, you put Tamina in there... Um, and then Ember Moon... She doesn't really have any friends right now, and uh, she's against those two big women. Yeah, she has no allies at all. Um, I'm just wondering now, um, I thought Ronda looked unbeatable. Um, I think if you put her against uh, Tamina and Nia Jax, I think that could be, uh, I think that could be pretty dangerous. All uh, right, what insight do you have for us, Scott? Uh, I, I, don't under, I, I don't understand about Tamina either. I think it's just her dad was there, and they just need something for her to do, so they put her with her cousin. Um, <laughs> I, I think Becky is the one that's going to finally beat Ronda. Oh, a Survivor Series? Yes, absolutely. Oh, wow. Okay, um, so you said cousin. Who's the who's her cousin? They're related. To oh, me. They are? Yeah, they're all related yeah, from I, it. saw that Roman Reigns yeah. family. Oh. Yeah, they're not like first cousins or anything, but they're and they're not blood related at all, but it just somewhere along that family tree. Yeah. Yeah. That's Oh, so you learned something new. See, this is why we get quality guests on, like Scott, to educate you, because I don't always know everything about this, or sometimes I forget what I've told you. Every, every Samoan wrestler who's not Samoa Joe is all part of <laughs> that family. That's a pretty good summary. All right, Mason, what was your top <laughs> moment, then? My top moment is Kurt Angle. Um, when he comes out, he does the You Suck. Uh-huh. So Sasha, she's, she, well, the whole group's out there, and Sasha, you can see her in the camera, she's pointing at Baron Corbin when they say, you suck, and pointing at, um, so she's basically saying that Baron Corbin sucks. Oh, see, I didn't think she was pointing at that. I thought she was just getting involved with the whole chant. Um, I whole think chant. she was pointing at Baron Corbin. And I watched it for a second time, because somebody mentioned it online, that, wow, she was really getting into it. And, and she was. And Bailey actually, as well. When they, uh, yeah. they kept flipping across from it, so you couldn't really see exactly what was going on. Anything to add for this one, Scott? Um, 
I agree with Mason. They they definitely were pointing at like down the ramp at Baron Corbin, and I thought I thought that was hilarious. I, I liked that bit that, and I think Kurt Angle started to point at him too. Yeah, see, I totally missed that part. Now, also, we should say. Although we didn't have school this week, we were pretty busy. Um, I had end-of-quarter report cards to do and all things like that and training. So I didn't get to watch the full match. I got to watch the uh, the highlights again. So sometimes they cut a little bit too much, and you don't always get to see exactly what happened. Yeah. So yeah. I might have missed that one. Well, you managed to pick it up, Mason, easy enough. Now, I'm going to guess probably those three moments probably didn't actually match with yours at all, Scott. So have you got something totally different for us? Um, my third was probably during that whole everything when uh braun Strowman came out and kicked that security guard in the face that was one of my favorite moments because he obliterated that poor guy just boot right to the face oh he he definitely did and um yeah i feel kind of bad if that's the level of british security um <laughs> if, if that's the if that's the best that you can get that that does not speak well for the for the brits at all but it was pretty obvious that he was going to break through them even ronda broke through well i say that only ronda uh, ronda beat went, beat through several people as well and we've seen multiple actually yeah. didn't they have wasn't it brock and braun and they had like every single wrestler from the backstage they come through still... and they still managed to get yeah. through so if and you have the same thing for brock and roman yeah so if you have a handful of uh, security guards they're clearly not going to be sufficient to and Becky and Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much anybody who wants to do that. You got anything to add for this one, Mason? Um, no. All right, let's go to number two then, Scott. Uh, my number two, I I really enjoyed the the women's um three way match or six woman tag match, uh-huh. however you put it. Um, I I I like the way that that. Bailey, Sasha, and Natalia work together, and then I think the Riot Squad is amazing. I, I like what they do together. It's three very different wrestlers, but they kind of they just seem to work together. I also thought it was really, um, it was really good because um, I like all three of them, and I never would have thought of like putting them three together. So I thought that was some good teaming up on WWE. I I thought it was the same old stuff, though. We'd already seen it recently. I didn't think it needed yeah. to be done again. There was actually a few matches that were repeats on this one. All right, we got to take a time. We got to take a time out here for a second, Scott. We're absolutely killing ourselves. Was that trash can? No, that was JRT. You could That's see JRT's ass crack <laughs> on camera. <laughs> And we're trying to listen seriously. And we're like, no, we lost it. Mason did a great job. He tried. He got up first, and you actually tried speaking. I know, I tried speaking a little extra so you could have some time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That was, this is why we do audio. This is why we don't, this is why we do podcasts and we don't do videos. So like, oh my god, that was funny. My belt broke yesterday. I haven't had a chance to buy a new one. It's no big deal. <laughs> I don't even know where we were. I didn't. I wasn't even sure which match you it said. It was the Sasha Banks. I, I thought I, I heard I you. I wasn't either. I, just heard I thought I heard you say Sasha, and then I was just winging Natalia. it on that basis. I was like, yeah. we've got to at least get through that point, and then we've got to. I don't even know. Was that your number two moment? I lost it. My yes, that was my number two. They, uh, they, they do do a lot of repeats in that. I don't know, it doesn't progress what is that? Lines on a week-to-week basis, it seems like, but I, I enjoy that match. Are you guys on fire in there, or is someone just smoking? That, that'd be, uh... Charity smoking, it's yeah. bad, Mason, don't do it. <laughs> okay, it just suddenly came down from the roof, though, it's like... No, no, he's just, he's behind the camera. Oh, okay, all right. Um, all right, then, I think we've got our composure back, Mason. Okay. Oh, my gosh, that was really testing art. We don't have any professionalism anyway, but that was really testing it. All right, what about your number one moment, then, Scott? My number one moment, uh, I actually meant to say the uh, the Braun Strowman after, but Apollo Crews, I haven't seen him wrestle in a while because I more or less only watch pay-per-views. Mm-hmm. He, he's impressive. He, he really is. Um, like just his his whole physique and then just the way he moves is is very impressive to me. Um, I like I don't know I I feel like WWE is kind of sleeping on him, giving like I, I don't know Bobby Lashley coming back. It's like I don't know I, he does nothing for me, but I think Apollo Cruz is he's he's probably my big like wrestler wrestler of Titus Worldwide. Mm-hmm. I don't 
necessarily include Dana Brooke as a like full time wrestler. Okay. Um, I I started watching Apollo. Actually, this is when I started watching NXT because I sort of got heard people talking about it online. I was like, oh, I'll check out to see it, and I was really impressed then. I was like, when he comes up, he's going to be super impressive. And those first couple of matches, he was. They pushed him, and they don't know how to book him. They have no idea what to do with him. No, um, they, they'll push they him one week, it. and then he'll lose. He'll be a job in the next couple of weeks. And then you won't see him for six months. And then they'll take the word Cruz off his name and make him Apollo. Then they'll bring him back again as Apollo Cruz. Then they'll put him in Titus Worldwide. And then, I don't know what to. I don't know what to say. I agree with you. I think he's really good. I just don't think they know what to do with him right now. Bring, yeah. Put him back in NXT. Uh, you could put him back on NXT, but that's that's really frowned upon. That looks like they haven't made it. If they do that, that makes you look really weak. I think if you put if you if you're being sent back to NXT, well, Drew McIntyre did it. Uh, well, he, he left. He was like Vince's boy. He was, but he left. He yeah. physically left, and then he actually came back later. But yeah, it, it's a tough one for that. When he left, I don't think they really had NXT. Like it wasn't it wasn't what it is now. It was more the competition show. But yeah. I know what you're saying with that. Yeah, well, you guys both avoided what... And I didn't write, actually... I was actually bad cop on my other podcast, so I was actually writing down only bad moments rather than good moments. Um, but I had one clear good moment that you guys all avoided, and it might just be because it was specific. I really liked Elias again. Not not that there's anything new there, but more the British reaction action to him. Um, they loved him. Yeah. They loved him. As soon as he came out, they were singing the Walk With Elias, but they were singing it to... And I can never remember what it's called. I think it's 7th Nation Army. I think that's the uh, the song that they were singing it to. Um, yeah, they couldn't have been more over. Um, he beat Dolph as well. Yeah. I was shocked. I was like, well, he's obviously... He gets his moment with his song, and then obviously he's going to lose to Dolph. And they let him beat Dolph. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Is this finally the push for Elias? Is Elias going to get some sort of belt, like an Intercontinental Championship or something like that? Um, I hope so. I hope yes. so. I wouldn't be mad if he was IC champ. I I feel like he would he would carry that well. Oh yeah. Also, if I was a WWE superstar and I had nothing to do, the Raw Tag Team Champions, I could have just walked out and helped Seth and then become a a, a <laughs> tag team champion. Yeah, you just said why didn't somebody just come down and help him and then he could have been um I don't know if you're allowed to do that. I know Braun Strowman Dude, did with Dude um did it. Nicholas. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Dude Love and um Stone Cold Steve Boss was wrestling Owen and the Bulldog, I believe, and uh, Mankind tried to do it, and Steve said no, do, uh, Cactus Jack tried to help him, and he said no, and then Do Love came up. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Well, I think right now they just want him to... I, you can't have a one person as a tag team. Uh, I think they just want to set that rivalry up with um, with Dean right now. So that also made sense. Um, one that you didn't pick as a moment, I also thought, why did they let Dean talk? Don't let him talk. I loved him not talking. Yeah. I loved him just scowling at... Um, uh, Seth and making him wonder what was going on. That. Oh, Tommaso Ciampa. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it was like that. Correct. It worked brilliant. And I didn't think about that. That worked. Ciampa didn't speak for weeks. We had no idea when we started watching that together. We're like, what's going on? He's not even saying anything. Because we didn't know the backstory yeah. at that time. So, yeah, no, I think it would have worked very similar to that one. All right, Scott. The other gentleman who did that was Y2J Chris Jericho. All right, now we got a special quiz for you that I actually wrote weeks and weeks ago. And then this morning I was like, oh gosh, I hope I can find that because I lost some files on my computer. Uh, luckily enough, I still have it. Now, I know that you're a big hockey fan and you go and watch your local team. I'm not sure, is it the yes. Wor Worcester Bruins? I don't know if it's an affiliate of the Bruins, right? Oh, okay. So what we picked for you, and I'm, I'm, I think we might have talked about this before. Are you aware that there's a Boston in England as well? I assume there was because that's where we got all of our time. Sure, of course. And I used to travel through there many times when I used to go to holidays on the uh, east coast of England. Um, yeah, Boston, Lincolnshire. And um, oh. they actually have their own wrestling organization over there. It's called the Fight Factory Wrestlers. And I've picked some classic Bruins players. Now, I don't know how good your knowledge is, so I went back quite a few years. So it might be, it could turn out, this is like the Babe Ruth of, ba of the Bruins, and you're going to go, well, I already know these, but we'll find out, okay? So your answer is either uh, hockey player or wrestler, okay? 
Alrighty. Now we haven't we've, we haven't recorded with Jackson because we just wanted him out of the house. We're like, go get out so we can record, and it's quiet. So we'll record with him when he gets back. Um, we always like to pick anyone who we recognise who has a name like Jackson, Mason, or Graham. So we got a couple of those in here as well. Okay. All right. First one is Art Jackson. Art Jackson. I'm gonna go with a wrestler. Okay. Uh, Dave Isaac. Okay, you see how much did you see how much thought Scott gave to that one? I might have to edit that one down. You could see the thoughts going through his head. All right, number three, Edward Ripper. Ed Ripper, I'm going to say a wrestler. Okay, Fred Gordon. That's such a hockey player name. They call him Gordo. I already know it. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say a wrestler. Oh, okay. I do like to put reverse psychology questions in there as well. If sometimes I think I can mess with you. Uh, Kip Sabian. Now, how far back in the Bruins did you go? Because that is... I picked one. I'm looking on here. They're all at least 50 years old. Some of them are nearly 100 years old. Excellent. (laughs) Um, This is just a psychology quiz. This is just so Jackson can be part of the podcast. I will say wrestler. Okay. Uh, Magic Myers. Hockey player. No, no, because no one would have that name if they weren't that good, and if they, I'm going to say wrestler. Okay. Uh, Ron Shock. That's a hockey player. Is that a famous player, then? <laughs> Not famous. But you've heard of that person. All right. Yeah. That was the most recent one I had. That was from the 60s. Uh, Teddy... I was kind of hoping you'd be like, oh, Bobby Orr. <laughs> I know Bobby Orr. I know a few people. Uh, even Jackson knows yeah, Bobby Jackson Orr. Knows. That's his... He actually got that jersey for his fourth birthday present because he loves the Bruins. Uh, he loves Bobby Orr. Um, and when he was three, he used to do the Bobby Orr dive. He did, yeah. He used to do the Bobby Orr. He knows him very well. Um, next one, Teddy Graham. That's a, that's a, a, a snack food. That sounds like it is. a wrestler would have that. Oh, yeah, Teddy Graham. Trash can't saying no. I'm going to say wrestler. Okay. Tiny Thompson. That, that's a hockey player. And Will Cruz. Wrestler. All right, let's go back through. Uh, number one, Art Jackson is a hockey player. Uh, Dave Isaac is a wrestler. Edward Ripper is a wrestler. Fred Gordon is a hockey player. Kip Sabian is a wrestler. Magic Myers is a wrestler. Uh, Ron Shock is a hockey player. Teddy Graham is also a hockey player. Tiny Thompson is a hockey player. And Will Cruz is a wrestler. Mason, I counted six out of ten. Mm-hmm. All right, Mason's nodding. So obviously, average would be five out of ten. And the challenge, of course, is to uh, not just tie. You got to try and be smarter than a six-year, uh, smarter than a four-year-old. Yeah. So we'll have to see. So if Jackson can get six or more, then he is good for this one. And you'll have to listen on Friday to see if that's actually true or not. Excellent. I was I was getting ready for all sorts of uh, Chris Jericho questions. To be honest with you. All right, Jay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. First one. Art Jackson. Yes, Lewis. Uh, nope. Dave Isaac. Wrestler. Correct. Edward Ripper. Wrestler. Correct. Fred Gordon. Wrestler. Nope. Kip Sabian. Wrestler. Correct. Magic Myers. Wrestler. Correct. Ron Shock. Hockey player. Correct. Teddy Graham. Wrestler. Nope. Tiny Thompson. Um, nope. You got five. This is the last one. Will Cruz. Hockey player. Oh, it was a wrestler. All right, you got five out of ten. Scott got six out of ten. So who's the winner, Jackson? Me. Come over here. We can't hear you. Who's me. the winner? Me. No, you got five. Scott got six. Which one's more? Um, five. No, it's not. And he's laughing and he's running off. All right, good job, Scott. We declare you the winner on this one. Anyway. I wish there was a college that was wrestling, that taught wrestling. They have wrestling schools. No, like, teach. <laughs> what, like Harvard? Yeah. Go to Harvard for wrestling? Yeah, sure. Boston College? 
<laughs> well, you can go and be uh you're talking about WWE star wrestling, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, they have yeah. wrestling. You yes. know they have wrestling in college, right? Yes. Because Brock Lesnar won, like, national championship. Uh-huh. And, and things Kurt Angle? Like, um, Kurt Angle, probably. It wouldn't surprise me. Was, was a very good collegiate wrestler. Yeah. But you mean you want to teach people how to take a bump? Yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds like, hey, anyone wants to sponsor Mason's business idea here, that would go down pretty well, okay? I'm sure you'll put your name to it, but yeah. So you want to know how to take a chair shot safely, how to take a bump, all that sort of stuff? All right. Sounds good. All right. Let's move on to our second event of the week then. Uh, this was also from Manchester. I don't know why they stayed in one place. That didn't seem very nice for the British fans. Uh, anyway. Um, I thought they would have like, been one near the top and then one near the bottom. I would have thought so. Was I know they did one in. There? In no, that was in America. That was in New York. I thought they would have done one. I know they did London before, but I thought they would at least move somewhere else. All right, we're going to reverse it. We're going to go the other way around. We're going to let the guests go first this time. So, Scott, what have you got for your third moment from SmackDown? My third moment from SmackDown. I didn't actually watch SmackDown. I watched a condensed replay. Well, that's uh, perfect because that's I, what all of us did. None of us had time. Mason literally, he had to eat his uh, dinner at the same time as watching it and take notes. Um, I didn't have time. I caught it quickly this morning because I had to record as soon as I got home from school with Matt. So, yeah, we're all on the same We're on the same level for this one. Um, I, I love the fact that they made D-Bright and The Miz co-captains of the SmackDown team. I thought that was really well done. Oh, I think that's absolutely perfect. They don't get on with each other. I, I thought that was um, I thought that was good. Uh, they can always one up each other as well. And they started to do that when they were picking people for matches. Well, I'm picking this person. Well, I'm going to pick this person. I, I totally agree with you. I think that was a great idea to do. I think that um, that they're gonna, are they both on the team? Um, so they're both going to be on the team, and I feel like they should pick like one each. And then, like, have a a match to decide who gets the other pick. All right, did you watch this? Did I put the right episode of SmackDown on? Yes. This is the one that you watched 15 minutes ago. They just picked the teams. You saw that, right? I didn't... They picked the whole one? Yes, they picked the whole teams. Oh. That's why they were having the matches. Oh. They each picked one, and whoever won that match, they're on the team. Oh, the Usos were on the team? Well, the, no, that was a different one. That was just a regular old match. Um, I think I might give Mason too much of a condensed highlights one because I think he missed a little bit on this one. I know um, Samoa Joe's on there. Samoa Joe is on, I correct. Know, that's all I know. All right, give us your second moment, Scott. My second moment was actually with the Usos. Uh, their match with the New Day, thought it was really, really good, and they, I guess they do the the tag team survivor series and they picked the Usos won so whoever won got to be the captain and they picked the new day first and they you know gave them props and gave them hugs and I thought that was that was pretty cool because they've had some battles over the years and it's good to see them you know show each other respect because they are both good tag teams even though I don't really like the Usos but they're undeniably good and I think this is where I've got to admit that um, I wasn't really paying attention. Um, I like the, we're the reverse. I like the Usos and I can't stand the New Day. And I was like, man, I've seen these so many times in pay-per-view events where they really do put on a show. I'm like, this is a house show. I, I didn't pay any attention to this match at all, Mason. i got to be honest. So I'm going to be adding very little to this. Um, I'm hoping you paid more attention than I did. The New Day is like, I just, they just act so weird. Like, the, who throws pancakes in the crowd? See, that's oh, why... I dump pancakes on a kid. They just dump the whole box of pancakes on this kid's head. The Budios we... who throws cereal into the crowd. We talk about at Nova Pro when we go, we like the silly matches. We like the ugly ducklings. We like their silliness. And for some reason, it doesn't translate to the New Day. I don't know what it is. I personally think it's their annoying instruments, because they really sort of... Yeah, they don't play it as much now, though. Thankfully. I think it's just that sound that annoys me. I don't like them being... I don't mind them being funny as much. And I've actually said recently, I actually admire the New Day for their wrestling ability now, which I never used to really recognize before. Um, but yeah, no, I don't have anything to add for this one at all. And Xavier Woods doesn't do much. Uh, I would disagree with you on that one. I, I really like Xavier. He's probably my favorite member, actually, He's of New not, Day now. He, he doesn't really... He either wrestles and does, like, all the work, or doesn't wrestle and do none of the work. Like, he doesn't, like, split the work with anybody. Alright, I think we're at number one moment, right, Scott? Yes. Uh, my number one moment is, uh, there was a match for, I don't know if it was the final spot, but a match for a spot on the team. 
between Andrade Cien Almas and Rey Mysterio. And Rey Mysterio is old. I don't know how old, but... I can tell you exactly how old he is, because I looked it up because I was curious. He's older than me, which absolutely shocked me. Um, he's going to turn 44 in December, so in one month's time, he's going to be 44. And I was like, wow, um, considering my body and considering his body at that, I'm like, I can't even, yeah. It's like, it's crazy how much agility he has. Mm, oh, exactly. So, yeah, he's 44. I'm sorry for interrupting, but I, it, it's not very often I know a wrestling fact, so when I do, I have to get it in there. <laughs> They, they put on an absolute lucha like a, a lucha style classic like i i kind of want to go back and watch that again because it was it blew my mind that that's what they had on free tv like they put that as you know in, in wrestlemania or a crappy b pay-per-view main event like i would be absolutely happy with it but the fact that it was just on regular tv is nuts to me i i don't understand why wwe doesn't do that more often for big events. And I would absolutely agree with you. Like I said, I was recording bad moments, but the one that stuck out for me as a good moment, I, I like Rey Mysterio anyway. Um, I've been really impressed with Andrade since he's come up. A lot of those people who come up from NXT, like we said with Apollo, they don't seem to know what to do with them. Um, they get lost in the mix a little bit. He went straight up to, uh, he was fighting AJ. I think he fought AJ two weeks in a row, and both of those matches were absolutely brilliant. My only surprise is, kind of like Apollo, where did he go for the last six weeks, though? Um, I'm hoping he was injured. And I know that sounds bad, but I'm hoping that was the legitimate reason why he didn't appear on the screen. But if you're keeping that sort of talent uh, backstage for six weeks, I think that they're really missing an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Anything yeah. to... Add Mason. I have a Rey Mysterio moment for my moment, so I, I just... Okay, think. so you want to go to your three? All right, go ahead. Give me your third moment then, Mason. My third moment is Nikki Cross is on WWE against Becky. Like, Sanity moved up, didn't do much, but then Nikki Cross is down in NXT doing a lot, and she finally gets to move up to WWE. Honestly, I think Nikki Cross is, like, half of Sanity. She's really good wrestler, and, um, Alexander Wolf, he's like, eh. And then, um, Killian Dane, he's just a big guy. But, and, um, Darren Young, I think he's a, Eric Young. Who's Darren? Oh, yeah, I remember. Okay, <laughs> so, Eric Young, I think he's a really good wrestler. So, Alright, so who's Darren Young, then? Okay, he's the other guy in Titus Worldwide. Like, it, it, it's the guy with the afro. And then, I don't know. And then he he's with, he's in Titus Worldwide. It's him, Darren, Titus. Isn't that Dana Brooke? And Dana Brooke. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, Dana Brooke is the guy with the afro. No. <laughs> Dar Darren Young is not in WWE anymore. Oh, he's he in? um he got released a year ago, oh. two years ago, something like that. Um, he's actually from around here. Oh, okay. Yeah, he he went to yeah oh yeah, Jared T. Shagan said no. He is he's he's from the the Boston area. He went to the New England Pro Wrestling Academy. Okay, fair enough. So basically, what you're telling her is. What you're telling is, though, you love Nikki Cross and she, you think she's the best thing in sanity. Now, the thing that surprised me most about that, obviously she's been pretty prominent in that storyline with um, who attacked Alistair Black recently. And for that reason, and with already sending um, sanity up, I was not expecting her there at all. I didn't see any spoilers. Actually, I saw a couple. It said ahead of time. Um, it was only like a couple of hours before that she was moving up. And, um, yeah, no, I was totally shocked. I was like, wow. Against now, the WWE champion. Against Becky as well. Now, my only problem is, though, obviously she had to lose to Becky. You're not going to beat Becky straight away how strong she is right now. Are they going to... You said they've moved her up. I don't know if they have moved her up. Is that just a one-match thing? Or are they going to send her back down again? I, I'm hoping they keep her up. I'm hoping not. You were hoping to keep her up as well? I'm hoping she's not going to be one of those jobbers and then just go back down. I hope not either. I, I'm thinking possibly right now it might have just been a, been a one-shot deal only because they were in Manchester and that's um, a stone's throw from Scotland. It's that's not, <laughs> it's not terribly um, far. You know. To American audiences, I could, uh, I could possibly understand that. Uh, from a British perspective, I find that very amusing. But yes, I could. I guess she's from the United Kingdom, so I guess on that basis, yes, that would be fair enough that you would, uh, you would put somebody back like that. Asian Finn, that's why. 
Well, Paige is the gen is the general manager, so I'm gonna, I was expecting her to be there. That would have been kind of mean not to include her, but no, she was back in England, which I'm sure she liked. All right, Mason, I've lost track because that was so long. We talked I about that. Two. That was two. All right, no. next one then. No, I'm on two. Oh, you're on two. Okay, go ahead. I like Becky and Ronda's promos, both of them. <laughs> Ronda's promo and Becky's on SmackDown. Huh? You like Ronda's promo on SmackDown? No, Ronda's promo on Raw. Okay, you know and we're on SmackDown right now. I know right we're now. on SmackDown, but Becky, I, I just think... So you like Becky's was, promo, then? Yeah, All right, I'm giving you. and Ronda's. <laughs> I thought oh, did they play them back-to-back? -back? Yes. Oh, okay, well, I'm being they harsh played on, on like, you, then. They a replay, and then they showed Becky. Oh, okay. And I like Becky's the week before. And it looks like definitely Becky's going with that theme that she's the man. And uh, uh -huh. we're not going to repeat what thought, um, Ronda okay. said. I well, thought it would have been, I'm the woman. Well, I thought it would have been as well. And particularly with evolution all being exactly. about women's revolution. And then I was surprised by that. And I, um, she's definitely going with it. She's actually thrown out a challenge to Seth Rollins as well. She did. So we'll see what happens with that one as well. well all right, what did you make of their promos then, Scott? I absolutely love Becky Lynch. She's, she might be my favorite WWE wrestler right now. Like, just overall, I think she is... Just the way that she's taking to that, to the to turning heel, I think she's great, and I would love to see her wrestle Seth Rollins. They would put a great match. And I think that would be, be great too. Mixed partners. partners. I don't want to see them as mixed match challenge, but I want to see them facing see, off against um, each other. Becky and face -face. Um, men, men can wrestle women. It's okay. Correct. Two thousand eighteen. I want to see Becky and Finn be partners. Oh, that would be. Awesome. That, that would be great. I wonder why so they didn't Irish do that. Oh, I guess the only reason they didn't do it is one's on Raw and one's on SmackDown, so they can't, otherwise they're going to be in different towns. But yeah, if they could switch brands for one of those, that would work really good. If they could move Finn across to SmackDown or something, that would be a, that would be a great combination. Now, well, I know you're a big fan of indie wrestling as well, Scott, So, um, and I talked about this with somebody recently. I don't see any reason why they couldn't do that as a one-off match. Um, who's the better one? And I actually said, who would be the perfect person, like at a WrestleMania match, perhaps? If you're going to bring in a revolutionary match, why not do it at WrestleMania? Um, Becky versus who? So, Seth, would that be the best combination, do you think? Uh, I think I think her and Seth would have a great match. Her and Finn would, because mm -hmm. they shared the ring, you know, during during Finn's uh, teaching days. He, he trained Becky Lynch. Um, I think they'd have a good match. AJ... I think Becky and AJ would have a good match. Okay. You're kind of thinking the same thing that I'm thinking, except I'm thinking for Raw. Both champions, um, women's and men's. Brock versus Ronda. Brock and Ronda? <laughs> I could get behind that. That would be That's exciting. Probably. That would be exciting, but I think she'd get crushed. But yeah, I, I think that would be an exciting. I think that would definitely be um, an exciting one. Now, I actually asked that. I was trying to remember when you were speaking. I was trying to buy myself some time. It was the uh, Take the Bump podcast. I asked them who they thought would be good, and they came up with a few names that I know JRT likes. Uh, Jericho would be one of those. Um, Jericho and Becky Lynch. Yeah. He's he could always put people over pretty well. If he takes a loss, I don't think it's so bad. But you know, he's going to put on a show as well. Possibly Shawn Michaels, if you want to get the big names out there again. That could be somebody who could probably match up with her as well. The Marine Six. All right, um, we're going to your number one moment, Mason. Yeah. I've lost track a little bit. So, um, when Rey Mysterio, you know how he slides off the mat into, like... He like his new move? Yeah. yeah. Slides through the bottom rope? Instead of that, he slides under the bottom rope and does a DDT on Andre, Andrade Cien Almas. And when I watched that to begin with, I thought he'd messed up. I thought there was another bot. I should have known better. Rey Mysterio is class. He's been doing this for long enough. But, yeah, no, I'm really loving Rey since mm -hmm. he came back. Um, I think it's fantastic. And I know you were, we already talked about that as one of the matches as well that you thought was really good. Um, anything specific on that one, Scott? Um, that, that specific uh, spot where, where he did slide out, that, that was cool. I thought, it, I thought he messed it up too. Um, just all the different lucha moves. I'm trying to think of what they're called. Where they're spinning around. Tornado, all like tornado oh, Tornado DDT? DDT? Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, like all, that, all that kind of stuff. That... That takes such coordination between the two wrestlers. Like, yeah, vertical suplex, you know, you got to jump as they, you know, pull you up and, and all this and that. But just the whole, you know, I'm going to flip around you 20 times and then I'm going to say, be like, I, I love that. I, I think that just those two guys, grow, both of them growing up in that style, I think just worked great for them. Now I can see his butt crack. <laughs> 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 he, he bent over to look at 
it was all there. Now you would see why we... And we weren't expecting it either. It was like, okay, we're just talking, and then it was just you, and then suddenly, nope. We got partial butt crack. <laughs> I think we did... Actually, you made it through, because you were worried about this, Scott. You were worried about not oh, being I able to... Absolutely worried about it. And uh, you've done it fine. I'm I just forgot. checking. Yeah, we've been on for we've been on for nearly forty minutes, and yeah, you haven't. Um, I don't think you've even been close. I know JRT no. said he almost dropped one, and he sort of had to wind it back in again and use a different word. But I don't think you've even been close. I've not been worried at all. I absolutely did on uh, Mavs podcast. Oh, we as well as, as, well as uh, JRT, he did as well. We did, we did, and I heard the ring bell for that one. And you got yeah. one of you. I think it was right near the end, wasn't yeah. it? Like the last few minutes. Yes, that I, I I threw a pen at our trash can, and it it, it scared JRT, so he. The brown word. <laughs> All right, I think that's going to do it for us. We've talked about Raw, we've talked about SmackDown. Um, do you want to plug the uh, the Blade job for us? Do you want to tell us where we can find that? Where we can find all you guys who are on there, and where I guess when you release as well? Because I'd like to know, to be honest, because it seems pretty random from my point of view. Absolutely, it is. Um, we release every Saturday, Sunday, whenever JRT gets around to uh, to putting it up. You can listen to us. The Blade Job Wrestling Podcast. We are on uh, Google Play. Now they're just pointing at me. We're on Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify. That's the big one. Um, iHeartRadio. Spotify actually just released this week, and we were making fun of it on the episode that it was, you know, first release on. And uh, ah. you can follow me at Blade Job Perkins. You can follow the show at The Blade Job Show. You can follow Trash Can at Steel Trash Can. You can follow John Olin at John underscore Olin. And you can follow JRT's personal account, which is mostly about video game and nerd stuff, at Blade Job JRT. Wonderful. Um, I will make okay, sure... YouTube. We're on YouTube. Oh, of course. And that's how I started watching you guys. That was the... Uh, yeah, that was originally how I started watching. I can't remember who I interacted with originally. Um, but yeah, I remember you saying it was on YouTube, and that's how I used to watch. And I was so glad when you got it onto iTunes. Uh, I don't so like watching... Yeah, I don't like watching it on YouTube as much, but I persisted. Now I refuse to do it. Actually, I don't want. I don't listen to any podcast that's only on YouTube. But I made the exception for you guys because I think I've told you this before. I nominated you guys for my podcast of the year. Uh, it was pretty unanimous as far as I was concerned. So um, I will make sure that I get all those um, Twitter handles in the episode notes. So if you didn't manage to take notes thoroughly, you can do that. I'm sure everyone who follows us must follow you as well, anyway. But just to make sure, hopefully, we can, if we can find any new followers out there, we'll do. So. So, and we'll try and bump. I think we're, I think you're up to eight listeners now. Is that right? So we'll see if we can get you up to nine by the next episode. I don't know. It, uh, I'm happy with six or seven. Okay, that sounds good. All right, I In, think including that... myself because I listen every week. <laughs> Just to pad those numbers. You got to pad those numbers how you can. I always listen to the own podcast as well. And if we can get Mason to listen yeah. to it, then we consider that double <laughs> listeners for that week. Yeah, I want to listen. All right. Oh, what to the Blade Jump Show? Yeah. You got to listen to five minutes once, I believe, right? Yeah. And actually, they did put a special one. They said Mason could listen to the first five minutes, and that's when you said, I don't listen to podcasts anymore, so I don't what? think you actually got to no, listen I to did. it. Oh, come on, dude. I didn't swear for 20 minutes just for you, and you didn't even listen. You I will. Once. No, the, on the episode where we're trying not to swear. Oh, yeah, I guess I did swear. The, yeah, the one where you tried not to swear, and you're like, well, I'll put in a mention so you'll know it's safe for Mason to listen. It's like, all right, we're not going to swear now, and then literally within 30 seconds, there was a swear. That should be like um, instead of trying not to laugh, it should be try not to swear. Uh, it should be. I think they've done pretty. I think they've done pretty good on that today. But yes, um, I remember listening to one actually, and I said I'm going to try and find an episode that Mason can listen to. And I got 50 minutes into it, and I was like, this is the one. And then the last two minutes, just like we talked about on Matt's episode, there was quite a few swear words at the end, so we didn't quite get to do it. All right, I think that'll do it for us. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you. It's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. Goodbye. goodbye. The music was Zigzag by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. 
http colon slash slash creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by slash 3.0 slash. And this for me.